Now that you've set up your tracker, let's start digging into the specific details within each individual section. At the top of each section tab in your tracker is a series of prompts to help you think about your performance holistically. Take a moment to reflect and then write down what was happening when you were working on each section. Where was your head? Were you rested, anxious, or tired? And what about the location? Was it busy or loud? See, we know that context can have as much of an impact on score as actual content knowledge and readiness. On test day, you're gonna fall back on your habits. So your job while you're studying is to make sure that that's a good thing. So let's start by looking at your habits on the quant section. From the question table, sort by difficulty. And you'll focus your attention at the lowest difficulty levels first. To do well on the test, you need to perfect your performance on questions that are below your target score. So start below the 500 level, and then under the 600, and so on. So what are the things that you're missing, and maybe only getting right by accident? How often were you rushing when questions seemed easy? Are there common mistakes that you're making? Careless errors, missing content knowledge? Are you having trouble applying strategies effectively? And were there any other patterns in the content areas or question types at these lower difficulty levels? For each of the lower difficulty level questions that you review, fill out the appropriate analysis category in the question table. Oh, and flag questions testing content areas you haven't studied. You aren't expected to know how to do them yet, so come back to review once you've covered that material. You'll do the same difficulty level scan for the verbal section, writing up your top level thoughts and notes for any questions that you review. Next up is one of the most important GMAT habits of all, your timing. And almost everyone's timing needs work. In general, we see a few common issues. Once upon a time, a tortoise and a hare were studying for the GMAT, and they decided to review their practice exams. The tortoise made sure that the questions in his quant tab were sorted by question number, in the order he saw them on the test. And when he compared his cumulative time with the target cumulative time, he saw that he was really far behind by question 10, and he hadn't realized it at the time. Honestly, it's no surprise that he ran out of time on question 28. Spending a ton of time on early questions and then running out of time is the most common issue we see working with students. The tortoise wasn't able to let stuff go or to use methods like estimation to be more efficient. This left him rushing on things he knew how to do and finally running out of time and having to leave things blank. Next, he sorted by time. Whoa, look at those longest times. He spent 28 minutes to get three questions right. That's the budget for 14 questions. And because of that, he spent under a minute on five questions and left another four blank. A devastating blow to even the best performance. So what about the hair? The hair finished a full 17 minutes early and spent under 30 seconds on lots of problems. Okay, it might seem like this was a better outcome, but he got so much wrong because he was bailing the moment he saw anything that was unfamiliar. In your story, you could be the tortoise or the hare. And here's the thing, neither end of this spectrum is permanent. End early, well, the more you learn, the more tempted you are to take longer. And did you run out of time? Well, you're likely to overcorrect next time and rush a little too much. It's normal for students to swing back and forth before landing on a comfortable pace. So take a look at your data to see where you land on the spectrum right now. It shouldn't be surprising that these same timing issues exist on verbal, just for a different set of reasons. A hare rushes on verbal, not because he lacks confidence and bails quickly, but because he's overconfident. He doesn't have a solid process for approaching questions and is okay with just winging it. He's sloppy when he's reading and is choosing answers without a process of elimination. The tortoise, however, usually takes too long on verbal because he overanalyzes details and reads answer choices over and over. Now you might be the tortoise or the hare in this section too, so it's time for you to analyze your timing habits. Review any questions where you took too long. Even if you got it right, was it worth the investment? And what about questions where you finished really quickly? Did rushing cost you any right answers? And timing issues don't need to be extreme to be worth noting. At the end of the day, we're trying to combat our inner tortoise and hare temptations and find a pace that's just right. The last step is to scan over the question list. By now, you've reviewed everything that was wrong or slow at low difficulty levels or where you took too long in general. What's left will be the questions that you got right in a reasonable amount of time 
or those at the highest difficulties that you didn't waste your time on. These are the problems that you deserve to be proud of, so scan over what's left and make notes in the tracker, especially about any of your good habits that you want to use next time. Continue to fill in the individual section tabs within your tracker and take your time. Our next step is to structure your study plan, so it's important for you to be clear on your habits, strengths, and weaknesses. In the next lesson, we'll use that information to prioritize your studies. <laughs>